you're new in town or just new to this whole podcast thing, you're tuning in to Law by Night, the podcast that discusses all things vampiric with no fear of breaching the masquerade. In this episode, we shall explore Stygia, the capital city of the Dark Kingdom of Iron, located deep within the underworld. We shall touch upon its rulers and the strange and wacky tourist spots. When we last spoke, we spoke in a great amount of detail about the Underworld, specifically that of the Dark Kingdom of Iron, championed by Emperor Charon. I know you made extensive notes like the good explorer you are, so it would be wise to refer to them here if you need to as we go over Stygia, the kingdom's capital and the location of the major headquarters of the various organisations of Western Wraiths. Stygia is important to the Phoenix Institute for our line of work, as it is here where we really begin to discover how these Wraiths operate in the underworld. For a very long time, there have never been any definitive maps of Stygia presented to us, which I somehow felt was a deliberate choice, but about three and a half years ago, as of the discussion anyway, we managed to find sketches of a map of the kingdom, which we were able to recreate right here. Just turn and look at the computer screen for a moment. The landmass is an unusual shape, quite unlike anything we have here. A narrow curve, almost like a banana, surrounded by a thick 100-foot seawall, buffering the might of the Tempest. The Iron Hills, a cluster of eight islands not far beyond the seawall off the eastern and northern shores of the Isle of Sorrows. They used to be given over to luxury estates and preserves, but thanks to constant population pressure, Jaron chose to incorporate them into Stygia proper early in the 20th century. Networks of bridges and causeways now tie them together with Stygia, though they're still on their own when the seawall closes. But do not be fooled by its thin size here on the map. Remember how we talked about how Stygia Stygia houses potentially billions of restless souls. The city is remarkably ancient and unlike anything we have in existence in the Skinlands. Both alien and familiar, home to the lost that eventually find themselves there. The capital to Charon's empire is the place to see and be seen, according to our research that is. We have yet to stumble upon the city ourselves for any real amount of time. We know Stygia sits on a stable part of the Isle of Sorrows, while simultaneously being at the mouth of the River of Death, which flows through much of the Dark Kingdom of Iron, which is but a few miles away from the Venice stairs that takes you right down to the labyrinth. Try not to focus too much on the contradictory geography. The underworld doesn't adhere to its own rules, let alone ours. I am highly certain you are not interested in the entire geography, like how the River of Death runs for about 15 miles from the east of Stygia, or how the erosion has caused the city to take on a whole mishmash of styles, but we have collected extensive notes which you can look into at your own leisure if you so wish. What I will share with you is is that we have learned whilst one can certainly fly into the city with our Konai powers, there are really two ways that the city's defenders prefer to enter the city. Well, you can go via boat on the River of Death, which we know is very deep, as are its many tributaries, flowing in all sorts of directions. You'll see relic ships sail gracefully, the vessels made out of soul steel, and an assortment of wheeled and gnarled trees. We have found reports of the ferrymen becoming rather furious to those who take an axe to said trees. I should mention that this is not to be confused with the Bay, as Stygians call it, or the Sea of Souls, to use the proper title, which is a bay filled with soul forge like material that some boats may sail on. Not very fast, mind you, given its viscous nature, but travel does occur here all the same. One could also take the train, most notably the famous Midnight Express, that carries you across the most rugged tracks. As for the isle itself, it is said there are seven hills, one for each of the Death Lords, the leader of each specific legion, to build their citadels. The Lady of Fate constructed hers on the Isles of Eurydice, some twenty miles offshore. Our studies have found there were actually nine hills, but they were devoured by construction. They occupied the best high ground, each one a mile away from the Onyx Tower. As a reminder, they are the Iron Legion, headquartered at the Seat of Shadows and overseen by the Ashen Lady. The Iron Legion is compromised of the victims of age. The Skeletal Legion, claiming those taken by disease, headquartered on the Seat of Dust and overseen by the Skeletal Legion. The Grim Legion, claiming the victims of violence and overseen by the Smiling Lord at the Seat of Burning Waters. 
the penitent legion, claiming the victims of madness, overseen by the laughing lady and quartered at the seat of succour. The emerald legion, for victims of happenstance, maintained at the seat of fawns by the emerald lord. The silent legion is overseen by the quiet lord and oversees the victims of despair from the seat of silence. And finally, you have the legion of paupers, quartered at the seat of golden tears, administered by the beggar lord and comprising of victims of mystery and whoever the beggar lord can get away with. There are other tourist spots you should know of, for lack of a better phrase. You have the Onyx Tower, Jaron's gigantic gleaming black silver lighthouse that was built upon the remains of what we believe to be the lighthouse of Alexandria. It has since been left locked since Charon went to fight Guru, but it still shines bright for wayfaring wraiths and the occasionally lost marina on the Skinlands. Connecting it to the Emerald Keep is the Road of Lords, used by the army of the Legions, primarily hence the title. There are actually a trio of interesting roads one should note. The Road of Steel runs across the whole city, some five feet above sea level. It is rather wide, certainly wide enough for infantry regiments to march in standard formation and for whole buildings to travel on their special platforms when it's time to relocate. Given its length, expect to see all sorts of interesting places, many of which are buried under the Isle of Sorrows as storms come and go and newer buildings are built over them. Literal buildings get pushed and shifted along, sinking into bays. Fascinating stuff, don't you think? There are also buildings present that never quite came to be, buildings that were literally transported and fell apart, unable to be put back together. Cutting through the Isle of Sorrows is an east-western line. Cutting through the Road of Lords at its lowest point, descending at an eastern shore, is the Road of Souls. It is as wide as the Road of Steel, but it is meant to contain less traffic also, as it overlooks the Seat of Silence from the south. The Road of Souls has two levels, a lower one for the aforementioned traffic, and a higher one for air travel. Not roads by any means, but one should know about the lower and upper bays, the former being the commercial heart of Stygia, and the former containing large caves and old relic ships that cause all sorts of troubles for the authorities. Riverside is not one district, but all the parts of the western shore where legion claims and interests don't run all the way to the waterline. It contains many rock outcroppings that have been exploited through tremors that pushed them up. There is a library on the eastern end of the Road of Souls, and we believe it is about half a mile in size, having many stories under and overground. Whilst an ancient building, it is said that the Onyx Point is where it all began. The Onyx Tower is located here. As for the other lords, Ironville, home of the Iron Legion, rests on the northernmost of the Seven Hills. Ironville has earned its title as one of the more conservative regions, protecting what is already there and consisting of wraiths who die of old age, holding on what do they know well, relics of the past as it were. Not actual relics, but I think you knew this already. The Spine, home to the skeletal lord of the Skeleton Legion, sits on one of the lowest of the Seven Hills, looming over its district much less than most citadels. All of the walls of this sad district are bone white, a trade secret of the artificers, one of the many guilds. No doubt bones were involved somehow. However, Hangtown under the thumb of the smiling lord of the Grim Legion is not so sad, but more violent and morbid as the name of the city may imply. Our research has indicated the patrols share similar paranoia to the medieval knights at all. We hold this works for the most part, as do many of the entertainment businesses that thrive in Stygia. The Laughing Lady of the Penitent Legion dominates the district of Sanctuary, a troubling place where laughs become screams as one report described. Despite this, we understand that, unlike Hangtown, confrontation is encouraged, at least for an iron raves who to survive to come to find both understanding and help. On the contrary, Newtown, ruled by the Quiet Lord of the Silent Legion, is a silent foggy district, allowing those to remorse as this legion homes those that have died of suicide, despair and martyrdom and other forms of self-destruction. Hmm, now that sounds a little familiar. Hmm. Oh well, Wiles Town, home to the Emerald Legion and its Emerald Lord, is covered with emeralds collected from the labyrinths, which is certainly no easy feat. Likewise, it is filled with maze-like structures that all must traverse to reach the Emerald Lord, for the protection of the city or himself, I wonder. Hmm. 
To the south, you have the aptly named South End, home of the Legion of Paupers and the Beggar Lord. The South End, according to our research, is a constantly shifting jumble of semi-independent buildings. Imagine, houses and buildings that are in one place one day and another the next. Guides must be a necessity here. I don't think they would like the tourists to gawk at the weird buildings, though. The last district I want to talk with you are the Iron Hills, which are mostly separate from the patrols of the Legion, according to our studies at least. This changed during the early 20th century, when Charon decided the Iron Hills belonged to the Onyx Tower and its former residents were shoved out of their homes as newer ones were built in place, but at least they were paid well so they couldn't possibly be unhappy with that, said no one ever. You may be curious if wraiths are assigned to living quarters based on their death, and the answer is no. Far too many to handle like that. I have to admit that a lot have been omitted from our discussion because, as I said at the beginning of tonight's discussion, Stygia is a bloody big city, a domain filled with weird geography, an eclectic cast of residents and god knows what else. Well, we know of some of them, the legions and guilds, which we will get onto, I promise, but if you are perplexed and fascinated with the strange lands in the underworld, just wait till we touch on the labyrinth. To be kept updated, follow the Law by Night VTM Twitter and Instagram pages to find out when we upload each episode. You can also find out by subscribing to the YouTube channel and clicking on the little bell, as you'll be immediately notified when the latest episode is live. Until next time, farewell.